All right. Hey, I'm uh, Jake McNeil. I'm reviewing extension of arms for Alabama Extension System. Uh, if you're tuning into this, uh, this webinar, this presentation, it's going to be uh, focused around selecting uh, wheat varieties and planting dates for optimum yield potential. This is really a, a moving target, trying to get a bullseye on a moving target, as others have referenced in the past. So many decisions come into uh, correct planting dates, uh, what varieties. For the most part, that decision is going to hover around uh, how much cool temperatures, uh, the vernalization that you expect to receive during the winter. And we can think of vernalization, that process, the accumulation of cool, uh, cool temperatures over a period of time, relatively or generally in the same way that we think of growing degree days or heat units during the summer. The, uh, the amount of vernalization required over that amount of time varies. Um, it can shrink uh, if you have a few very, very, very cold days, and it can take a longer period of time if you have a longer span of just mildly cool days. But that can, uh, you know, vernalization can occur temperatures um, as warm or as cool as, depending on how you think of it, 38 degrees. It doesn't have to be freezing, it doesn't have to be um, snow, it doesn't have to be on the ground, thankfully for us here, here in the south. But vernalization as a critical component uh, of uh, wheat maturation in, later in the spring, uh, flower development, uh, reproductive processes. And so most decisions that we make, certainly around planting date and variety, are gonna be uh, a function of where we are in the Mid-South. And your variety uh, and planting date that you select may be really dialed in to your specific region, even within the state. Uh, I'll give some numbers later I'll reference some notes that I've made on wheat yield. Uh, in the past, we have seen Pioneer 26 or uh, 10 to be, or to, or to account for a majority of the acres in North Alabama. That being just because um, very, very good yield potential. Uh, and with some of the, you know, great yields that we had this past year, surprising almost, um, it took the top. In multiple locations, uh, it proved to be, you know, potential well over 100 bushels. And so when, uh, when we think about planting dates, we'll tackle that first. Um, planting date itself, planting too early can accelerate uh, fall growth and then you're going to be uh, have too much growth and be at a, um, or not necessarily reproductive, but as a uh, physiological growth stage in the springtime with still potential for freeze and frost that you don't want to be in. Um, planting too early can also induce lodging. Too much growth too early in the season and when it takes off in the springtime, when it comes out of its vernalization period, it can be, it, you can just really get away from it. Um, I'm not going to touch too heavily on diseases. I'm going to leave that to Dr. Flanders. She's much more uh, qualified to speak on that than I, than I am, but it is a significant factor that plays into uh, your varietal selection. But I will say that um, early planting dates uh, can increase the risk of damage from a uh, hessian fly and aphid infestations. Um, it can also increase the risk that crop was going to run out of moisture before reproductive stages begins. I'm going to say that's probably not your, your main uh, risk factor there, but nevertheless, uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, I'm going to reference some other notes that I've made that uh, late planting can result in winter damage and fewer tillers. This is you know, nothing new. We know that we don't need to be too early, too late. We want to be Goldilocks territory right in the middle. So let's think about this past season real quick, and I'll reference some of the articles momentarily. This past season, we come into corn, soybean, uh, cotton harvest time, and we're bone dry. No moisture in the ground to speak of whatsoever. Uh, as a result of that, we don't have a whole lot of wheat, uh, excuse me, weeds to burn down for wheat planting. Uh, but the issue remains that we didn't have any moisture in the ground whatsoever to even think about planting wheat. So planting was delayed. Well, how long do we delay planting? How long can we go and wait for moisture that may or may not come? And then um, getting into very late planting, which can result again, winter damage, fewer tillers, um, risk of heat stress later in the year or later in the springtime 
reducing yields. How long can we wait? How long can we go? I know some farmers were willing to wait until Thanksgiving, uh, mid-November, to plant or uh, hoping that we would get some rain and uh, that we're not under irrigation capacity. And, and some did wait that long. And we didn't see a lot of uh, yield, negative yield effects due to that this year. We still had a lot of gentlemen that planted and planted a little bit deeper and waited for the rain. Uh, and we finally did get some of those cooler temps and moisture conditions uh, late November, going into December that we needed. And yields this year were surprisingly uh, very well. North Alabama is just a, it's in a region where you, uh, wheat is a fantastic cash crop, did well this year. One of the issues that we faced, and I mentioned earlier, we didn't have a lot of burn down uh, needs in planting wheat if it went in normal time or even mid to late, just because uh, again, we didn't have any moisture. Not only did we not have moisture to plant wheat, moisture wasn't there to germinate all the crop of weeds, so to speak. We knew the seeds were there, uh, they were gonna germinate, and when we did get the moisture, they did. So we had to kind of tweak our options for uh, weed management in winter wheat because we really didn't have much of a burn down or residual to speak of. So um, some of the other things that uh, as far as varieties go, uh, I can speak to North Alabama in that we had a, a really, really good year as far as um, some of our uh, on-farm variety trials. Uh, in Limestone County, we had uh, five, four or five varieties that averaged in multiple locations over 100 bushels to the acre. It's fantastic. Uh, those do represent uh, plots um, and not the field average for the variety that was planted predominantly for that field. Uh, but within that, there were really three varieties, uh, well, even four, that between both of those locations were averaging high 90s, uh, 100 bushels to the acre. I mentioned a few minutes ago that uh, Pioneer 26R10 is a, is a variety that represents a lot of acres planted in North Alabama, rightly so, two different locations at 112 and then 96 and a half bushels per acre. Another excellent variety this year we saw was Pioneer 26R41. Um, there are several other cropland, uh, USG varieties, all averaging in the mid to high 90s. Now, hardly anything uh, put up any numbers uh, lower than that. And even then, um, a lot of years, 80, 85 bushels, depending on the input cost, is still uh, a considerably um, good yield. But uh, that's some of the, the key things that I'm thinking of. Planning date, uh, we're looking at normally, uh, I want to see it in late October, early November, uh, with the burn down going out. And then, um, like we saw this year, we had a, we had a few instances of, uh, during our boot stage and tillering, that uh, a freeze was gonna potentially cost us uh, a little bit of yield. Most of that, even though um, it was a, a significant issue in one or two specific locations, overall we were still we were still good. Um, enough wheat went out mid to late planting date that uh, we were not in a in an area where physiologically the plant was far enough along so that uh, those tillers were damaged, and so thankfully even though we did have a late freeze this year uh, for a period of two or three days, didn't see a lot of significant yield loss because of that. I'm gonna reference uh, a couple of articles that I've come across that uh, will expound upon some of the things that I've said. This publication, aptly named, Planning Date and Variety Selection Effects on Wheat Yield, is an excellent publication. It synthesizes uh, a lot of the information that I've spoken of and does so much better than I've, I've been able to speak about it. Uh, factors from across the state. You can give you some key aspects going to fertilization, day length, or photo period, and how to select varieties based on that. Uh, if you were in a late planting window versus an early planting window, how you would go about 
selecting uh, earlier and late maturing varieties respectively. So this was a great publication. Uh, highly recommend that, uh, that you reference this in the future. I'll share another screen, screen with you. That, uh, this is from Dr. Flanders. I mentioned that, um, that I'm not gonna touch too heavily on uh, wheat diseases. Nevertheless, if you look across uh, this list of varieties from Dr. Flanders, uh, here are some varieties that are, have known resistance to the uh, bile type L of Hessian fly. And I'll switch down as well and some varieties that are known to be susceptible. You can pause this certainly in the future um, for any notes you might like to take. Guys, I um, just kind of want to give a quick update um, on things that I've seen in the past. Certainly this past year, we were extremely dry and yet came out very well. We were blessed to have the yields that we did. Uh, for any other questions you might have, uh, feel free, please uh, give me a call. Uh, I'd love to help out any way I can. Thanks.